created us in your image. You who breathed into us the breath of life and caused us to be living souls, you from whom we have our strength, we move and have our being. It is to you, O oh God, that we give thanks this morning. Thank you for being our God. Thank you for keeping us. Thank you for sustaining us. Thank you for providing manna for us. Thank you, O oh God, for guiding us. Thank you, O oh Lord, for your spirit which keeps us. Thank you for walking with us. Thank you for comforting us. Thank you for just being a merciful God for us. We have not always done that which you have asked us to do. We have not always followed your way, nor have we heeded to your word, but thank you for your mercy. Thank you for your grace. chooses to reveal him. 
Come to me, all you that are weary and are carrying heavy burdens, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn of me, for I am gentle and humble in heart, and you will find rest for your souls. For my yoke is easy, and my burden is light. Amen. Mm -hmm. Thus ends to read the gospel recorded by St. Matthew, the 11th chapter, reading the 25th through the 30th verse. Again, we greet you this morning. We're so happy to have you to join us on our various platforms. We're happy to have Sister Chandria here this morning to lift us in song. We're so thankful for her. Her husband joins her, us here in, in the building. We're happy to be able to see both of them. A couple of weeks ago, I kind of waved at them from the driveway, but we're happy to be able to see them this morning. Amen. We want to remind you, that, or at least to ask you to continue to pray for Brother Nate Tanner, who is still at the hospital, progressing along well, and doing both physical and occupational therapy, but we ask you to keep him in your prayers. We ask you to keep Brother Mike and his parents in your prayers as he's there for the, in Wilmington for the summer, taking care of his parents. Our district missionaries will have an update on Saturday and our district conference, which will be virtual this year. Our district conference is coming up on the 18th, I believe it is. I so. ask that you would go to either our website or our Facebook page and you will find information concerning those two events. Amen. We thank you for your continued support of this church. We ask that you would use your phone now and to go to your Giveify app. If you do not have the app on your phone, you can access it through our website. Our website is mountolive.net. You can access your, the Giveify app there. Some of you are dropping off your offerings here at the church in the mailbox. We would ask that you would make sure that you push the envelopes all the way down into the mailbox. Sometimes two or three of them get stuck. So just make sure you push them all the way down. We thank you for those who come by and drop those off, those who will mail them in. And even for those who will call either Charles, Mary, or myself to come by and to pick them up. We thank you for your continued support of this ministry. Amen. Mm -hmm.
text this morning is taken from this 11th chapter of St. Matthew's Gospel. The 11th chapter, the 28th through the 30th verses. Gospel of St. Matthew, the 11th chapter, the 28th through the 30th verses, and I am reading from, again, I'm reading from the New Revised Standard. Come to me, all you that are weary and carrying heavy burdens, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn from me, for I am gentle and humble in heart, and you will find rest for your soul. For my yoke is easy and my burdens are light. Come to me, all you that are weary and carrying heavy burdens, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn from me, for I am gentle and humble in heart, and you will find rest for your souls. For my yoke is easy and my burden is light. I've said for the past few weeks that we are living in uncertain times. Did you hear the jobs report on Thursday for the month of June? 4.8 million jobs were, uh, 4.8 million jobs for the month and the unemployment rate went down to 11%. Certain person who does nothing but lie immediately touted the numbers as if he was responsible for them. But you have to look closer at those numbers. These are not new jobs. These are persons who have been furloughed or have been laid off when, the, when states and cities shut down several months ago and who are now able to go back to work. I know a couple of persons in this congregation who will be returning to work in the next week or so, and, and I can't tell you how happy I am for them. I know what it is to be unemployed. I was once unemployed for about six months, and I didn't qualify for unemployment insurance, so I had to make it the best way I could. 
taking odd things here or there. And I, I did that for six months. Actually, it was seven because when I did get another job, they didn't pay until the end of the month. So I know what it is to be unemployed and trying to make it the best way you can. So I'm ecstatic for those who are able and who are going back to work. But I'm also fearful. Here's why I'm fearful. After having flattened the curve in most places and cautiously reopened, California is now closing restaurants and bars and several other facilities all over again. The governor of Texas issued a mandatory mask order saying, after saying for months that that wasn't needed. He also closed bars in the state. Over the next week, we'll see what the governor of Florida will do as that state continues to reach new highs in cases every day. And South Carolina is not far behind. Here in North Carolina, these people are crazy. Or as Reverend McFarland says, they're cray cray. My fear is that because people are cray cray, yeah. that this, as this virus spreads, people will refuse to do what is necessary to protect themselves and others and will cause a total shutdown again. Mm -hmm. And when that happens, those who have regained their jobs will lose them again. That's my fear. And this administration isn't helping. Friday, an administration official actually went on TV and said, who knew that this, re this virus would be able to survive this summer heat? <laughs> he actually said that. His bosses, his bosses being, being called the super spreader in chief after persons are beginning to test positive and get sick from his rally in Tulsa. We'll have to wait a few weeks to see what happens from his rally that happened in Tucson, Arizona. But even his son's own girlfriend tested positive Friday ahead of the rally in South Dakota. If the leaders of our government won't take this serious, no one of the people are cray cray. Beaches in this state have been open all weekend for a holiday. And even in my neighborhood over the weekend, there were several gatherings of people and the pool was open and no one was social distancing. We can only wonder what's going to happen in the next several weeks. And while people are refusing to wear masks and to social distance over 130,000 people have died from this disease. Stop and think about that. 130,000 people have died. These are definitely uncertain times. And this uncertainty can cause worry and anxiety. And if you allow your worry and anxiety to overcome you, then that can raise your blood pressure and cause even more problems. And if you're not working, then you may lose your health insurance. And that just increases the cycle of worry and anxiety. Yes, these are definitely uncertain times. But as I have also said, the times are uncertain to us, but they are not uncertain to God. Jesus has a word for us in these times of uncertainty. Jesus has a word for us in the stress we feel each day. Jesus has a word for us in our cycle of worry and anxiety. 
Jesus says to us in our text from Matthew 11, 28 to 30, come to me, all you that are weary and carrying heavy burdens, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you. Learn from me, for I am gentle and humble in heart, and you will find rest for your souls. For my yoke is easy. And my burden is light. In all of your uncertainty, Jesus says, come to me. In your stress and in the stress you experience each day, Jesus says, come to me. When you feel yourself in the cycle of worry and anxiety, Jesus says, Come to me. Come to me. All you that are weary and carrying heavy burdens, and I will give you rest. Jesus says, come to me. Because it is unwise, unhealthy, and unnecessary for us to try and carry these burdens by ourselves. He did not come to take on every sin and every experience of human life and overcome it all just to now watch us struggle with the things that he is able to give us the victory over. I imagine it's like parents watching their children struggling with something when they could just ask for help. <laughs> But they want to show you how much they've grown and how independent they can be. And you can easily help them, but they want to do it all themselves. Michael wasn't quite tall enough to get the milk off the top shelf of the refrigerator, but she kept trying. And then when I had gotten it down for her, she wasn't quite able to master pouring it into the bowl without also pouring it on the counter and the floor. But she kept trying. And I could easily have helped her and saved her the trouble and the mess that she made and the mess that I would have to clean up, but she kept trying, wanting to do it all herself. I imagine this is what it's like for Jesus watching us. He could easily help us, but no, we want to do it ourselves. We say, I can get myself out of this situation. We say, I can handle the problem myself. We say, I can figure out how I can pay all of my bills. We, we try so hard to show that we can handle our own business when all the while we're burdened with worry, burdened with stress, burden with anxiety and if we told the truth the more we try to handle it ourselves the worse the situation becomes and all the while Jesus is right there saying come to me Jesus not only says come to me he also says to take his yoke upon ourselves. This yoke is a reference to oxen. Some of you may have seen or even used oxen in the field, but me, you know what, well, I've only seen pictures. When you see a picture of two oxen, you will see that there is something around their necks that looks like a collar. And and that collar is tied to a bar which is between them. Well, that collar is actually called a yoke. And that yoke connects two oxen together. It is the yoke that ties or binds them to each other. This white collar around my neck and around the necks of other ministers you see is symbolic of that yoke. 
is often referred to as the yoke of Christ, which binds our lives and our ministries to him. It's tight, it's uncomfortable, but every time I feel its constraints, I am reminded that I do not belong to myself, but I belong to him. Back in January, well, January of last year, when Reverend Allen and Reverend Staten Branch were ordained, you remember, you may remember that they came in here with collars on the next Sunday. They had only been ordained on Thursday, but they had found themselves collars by Sunday. I was laughing at them. I was laughing at their excitement for finally being able to put on a collar. And of course, they had it all wrong. They had never worn one before. They didn't know how to put it on, so I had to take it off and show them how to put it on properly. And all the while, I was laughing at them. But in the midst of my laughter, I explained to them that every time they put that collar around their necks, they are oxen yoked to Christ. It is not their lives, but his. It is not their ministry, but his. And that they needed to wear it always with this in mind, because when you have it on, you are representing him. Jesus tells us to take his yoke upon us. But that doesn't mean we have to become ministers. It means that it is that we bind ourselves to him. We bind ourselves to him by surrendering our lives to him. We bind ourselves to him by giving up our own way and our own desires and following him. We bind ourselves to him by allowing his spirit to have more and more presence in our lives so that it can shape and mold us into what he would have us to be. And when we bind ourselves to him by the time that we spend with him each day, as we develop and grow our relationship, we grow closer and closer to him. He says, take my yoke and learn of me. Now we're back to what I've said in Bible study over the past couple of weeks, and even what I've said in a sermon a couple of weeks ago. We're called to learn of him. Ephesians 4.13 says that we are to grow or to mature into the full knowledge of Christ full knowledge that says that everything that we can know about him, we can know and we can learn now. We don't have to wait to heaven sometime off or somewhere. We can learn of him now. Notice in our scripture lesson, beginning in verse 25, Jesus is praying praying to the Father, and he says in verse 27 that all things have been entrusted to him and that no one knows of these things except anyone who the Son desires to reveal them. Well, Jesus desires to reveal these things to us. Jesus desires to reveal to us the secrets of the kingdom. Jesus desires to reveal to us the knowledge of him and the Father. All of these things have been kept from the wise and those of human intelligence, but Jesus desires to reveal them to us. Jesus desires that we would know the full knowledge of him. All of the things that 
previously were hidden from others, he desires to reveal to us. The only thing we need to do is to put in the work that's needed to learn. Yes, we have to put in work to learn of him. Knowledge of Jesus does not come by osmosis. We can't just pray and sit around one day and have it all dropped into our heads. No. We have to put in the work each day in prayer and stillness. Listening to his direction in our lives. We'll have to put in the work each day by our study of his word. We'll have to put in the time each day by drawing closer to him. And the more we draw closer to him, the more that we will learn of him and mature in him each day. This is what he is calling us to, to take his yoke, to bind ourselves to him to mature and to grow in the full knowledge of him in our lives. Come, he said, take my yoke and learn of me. Amen. And there's one more thing I want to tell you about that yoke. I told you that the yoke connected or bound one ox to another. Well, when one ox is yoke to another, it allows them to share the load. Neither ox has to bear the load by itself. Two oxen plowing a field together is much easier than one ox plowing by itself. So when you take Jesus' yoke upon you, not only are you binding yourself to him, he is also sharing the burden that you're carrying. Yes. All of your uncertainty, all of your stress, all of your worry and anxiety, when you are bound to him, he shares whatever burden you are carrying. Well, let me restate that. Because what I just said isn't exactly true. There's an imbalance in what I just said. We don't have the ability to share anything with Jesus. Sharing implies some form of mutuality. Something in common between two such that they can mutually distribute between them the weight of whatever burden that they are carrying. But what do we have in comparison to Jesus? What is it that is mutual between us? What is it that he has that we could possibly carry? <laughs> no, I stated that wrong. He's not sharing the load that we're carrying. When we take his yoke upon us, he's actually taking that yoke upon himself. He is carrying the full load and the full burden of what we were carrying. He takes upon himself all of our pain, all of our struggle. All of our stress, all of our worry, all of our anxiety, he takes it all upon himself when we take his yoke. Yes, and that's what makes his yoke easy. <laughs> all of the burden falls on him, and instead he replaces our burdens with his love. Love that surrounds us. Love that envelops us. Love that comforts us. Love that tells us that we are his own. He takes upon himself the full load and burden that we're carrying, and he replaces our burdens with knowledge of him. Knowledge that reveals to us 
who he truly is and the majesty of his glory. Knowledge that reveals to us the very secrets of the kingdom as we draw and we grow closer and closer to him every day. He takes upon himself the full load and burden that we're carrying and he places, replaces our burdens with grace. Grace that says, I'll carry this so you don't have to. And finally, he takes upon himself the full load and burden we're carrying and he gives us rest. This is his promise to us. If we would come to him, he, if we would take his yoke upon ourselves, if we would learn of him, he promises to give us rest. Rest is an end, a cessation from all that you are carrying and all that is weighing you down. A cessation means that you can cease from your stress. You can cease from your worry. You can cease from your anxiety. All of that can cease because Jesus has promised to give you rest. Rest means that you can now give all of that over to him, place that all on him, take up his yoke, which means that he now carries all of your burden, and you can sit down and rest. Sit down. Rest. Sit down. Put your feet up. Grab yourself a burner's. <laughs> I threw that one in there. <laughs> Grab yourself a burner's and just relax, not only because he carries your burden, but he will work out every situation in your life. So it's time for us to rest, to cease from our uncertainty, to cease from all our stress, to cease from all of our worry, to cease from our anxiety, to cease all of that and to take his yoke upon us. Yes. And when you take his yoke upon you, he promises to give you rest. And when he gives you rest from all of the burdens of this world, remember he has something else for you. He takes your burdens so that you can take his yoke. He takes your burdens so that you can learn of him. He takes your burdens so that you can grow and mature in him. Day by day as you spend time with him and as you grow in your relationship, he reveals to you more and more of his glory and more and more of who he truly is and, and his spirit will begin to conform you to being more like him. Jesus says, come, come. Come, all of you who are burdened and carrying heavy burdens, and I will give you rest. Amen. There may be one this morning who does not know the Lord Jesus Christ as your personal Savior. If you are here this morning and do not know Jesus Christ, he is not the head of your life. The Bible says that you can receive him right now. The book of Romans tells you that if you would believe in your heart and confess with your mouth that Jesus was raised from the dead, you shall be saved. Right now you can receive him into your heart. Ask him to come into your life. 
Tell him that you want to take on his yoke and he will take all of your burdens and give you rest. If you just need someone to pray with you, you can contact me at my email, which is pastor at myholidaymc.net. That email address has been placed on your screen. You can contact me at any time. We'll pray with you. We'll talk with you. We'll be able to counsel with you. Just contact me anytime that you need. We pray God's blessings upon you this week. Pray that you will allow him to give you his yoke, that you would take it upon yourself so that you can rest from all of the burdens that you have been carrying. Take his yoke upon you this week. Learn of him and let him give you rest. God bless you. Thank you.